I got on the road yesterday, <clears throat> I guess the day after or two days after the, the mask mandate was uh, uh, eliminated by a court in Florida, basically uh, ruled that the CDC did not have the authority uh, to have a mask mandate. Uh, immediately, the, I think almost all the airlines um, eliminated their own mandates, so uh, masks are not required on flights anymore. It'll be interesting tomorrow. I assume there'll be no masks on the international flight to London. That's the best. Those are long flights to have a mask on. They were already, you already were able to cheat on those flights, but, uh, but it, it, it was really good. Um, it was interesting, though. So when I arrived in the airport in San Juan, Puerto Rico, uh, almost everybody was wearing a mask. I'd say 80 to 90 percent of the people were wearing masks. On the flight from San Juan to Miami, most people... 70, 80% of the people were wearing a mask. I was in business class and almost everybody, yeah, almost everybody was wearing a mask. The woman next to me was wearing a mask. The people in my row on the other side were wearing masks. Almost everybody was wearing a mask. Um, in Miami, at the airport, I'd say probably 60% no mask, 40% mask. So the difference between Miami and Puerto Rico was big. I think Puerto Rico people uh, are more... I don't know, obedient maybe is the right, the right word, or, or they, they, they follow instructions and still still recommended to wear a mask. They, they wore a mask still. Um, but a huge difference in Miami. Uh, I was in, actually I haven't been to any other airports because I landed in Milwaukee way, way late at night. Um, so I, I didn't see what the situation was there. But um, it, 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 it was a pleasure to fly without having to wear a mask. But let me be clear about something. Let me be clear about something. <clears throat> I am not against masks. I've never been against masks. Uh, from day one, it, it, my view is if masks help, and if you're in a uh, susceptible group, if you're older than 65, if you have um, different pre-existing conditions, if, if you tend to get COVID pretty easily, like I know Tessie here gets uh, COVID, you know, she's had it three times. She's obviously quite susceptible. Um, and it's disruptive to your life and uh, you want to avoid it and you have a good mask, like an N95 mask, then yeah, I mean, wear a mask. Uh, I have nothing against people who wear masks. Um, I have no problem with people wearing masks in airplanes, at airports, uh, in, in social gatherings. I think outside it's ridiculous and stupid. So I, I, I draw the line at outside because I think outside is so absurd. But um, indoors... In crowded places, if people want to wear masks, I have nothing against them wearing masks um, and, and have no problem. I think it's wrong to make fun of people like that. I think it's wrong to complain about it. Uh, people have different levels of risk tolerance. People uh, might not want to get the flu or get, get a cold. In Asia, people wear masks all the time in public transportation um, and have for many, many years. Um, so I don't have a problem with people wearing masks at all. I don't think it's a moral issue. I don't think it's an issue of making fun of people. Um, I do think that uh, people should have a choice. I've always thought people should have a choice. And I think that people who are particularly susceptible to COVID or particularly COVID uh, uh, constitutes a significant risk for them should probably wear a good mask that protects them. And, and I, even though other people are not masks, if you wear a good mask, you're probably protected, uh, at least to some extent. So I don't see the big, you know, the big issue. The big issue has always been the mandates. The fact that the government is out of mandating masks is a major step forward. It is a, it is a, a victory for all of us. Um, you notice that the Justice Department is now appealing this case, not because I think they believe that masks are that important, not because they're worried about a spike in COVID cases, I think they're appealing it because they're afraid of the precedent that a court has basically said the CDC does not have authority um, to have such a uh, mandate. They're afraid of the elimination of government power. A lot of what we're going to talk about today is about government power. It's about what should be the role of government. And when government exceeds its power, it destroys it, it destroys human life, it destroys freedom, uh, and it, it, it destroys the economy. It, it, it is destructive, and it doesn't matter if it's Republicans, it doesn't matter if it's Democrats. So the problem with mandates, 
mask mandates, uh, vaccine mandates, other mandates, is that they are they are government excess power. They are it goes beyond the role of government to protect our individual rights. Um, it it is a it is a power grab, and a government interference in our lives that is unwarranted and unjustified, and is a perversion and a distortion. So uh, um, I'm happy happy that the mandate is gone, um, and uh, happy to see this return to a question of individual preferences and people making choices for themselves. Thank you for listening or watching the Iran Brooks Show. If you'd like to support the show, we make it as easy as possible for you to trade with me. You get value from listening. You get value from watching. Show your appreciation. You can do that by going to yourownbookshow.com slash support, by going to Patreon, subscribe star, locals, and just making a appropriate contribution uh, on any one of those uh, any one of those channels. Also, if you'd like to see the Iran Book Show grow, please consider sharing our content and of course subscribe. Press that little bell button right down there on YouTube so that you get an announcement when we go live. And for you, those of you who are ready subscribers and those of you who are ready supporters of the show, thank you. I very much appreciate it.